So hi, I'm Charlotte Frata, a third year PhD student, and I'm now kind of entering my final phase of my PhD. I still have about one and a half years left, which really stresses me out. And actually throughout my PhD, I accumulated a lot of papers on Zotero, but of course I don't always read these papers. I think this is a continuous struggle of every PhD student that I know, but I thought a really good challenge for me to set for myself this week is to try to read 50 papers. So that means about 10 papers a day. And if you also have a big reading challenge coming up or you have to write a paper, watch this video and I will give a lot of tips along the way of how I structure reading, how I kind of accumulate ideas, how I do a little bit more loose reading or how I try to go through a paper as quickly as possible. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing that I did is I accumulated all of the papers that I had to read in one folder in Zotero. And as I was scrolling through all these papers, I kind of felt super duper overwhelmed. And I was just like, where do I start reading all of these papers? Because as you know, reading one scientific paper usually takes me about two hours to really understand truly what the paper is about. And it can take even longer if it's about a new subject. And especially if I read all of the words in the scientific paper. So that's why there are definitely different strategies to reading a paper. Of course, the thing you need when you start a challenge like this is kind of like a supernatural aid. So something like ChatGPT, for example, could help. So I asked ChatGPT, of course, to make me a schedule for reading 50 papers. And I had to do it in the evening because throughout the day, I do actually have to work on my normal science work. And that's kind of the struggle of being a PhD student. You have to do your work and you have to read at the same time. But I asked ChatGPT to make me a schedule every day from five until 10 that I could read about 10 papers. So that meant I have about half an hour per paper to read the paper. And maybe you're thinking, how can you read an entire paper in half an hour? So I will show you how I do it. So the thing is that for scientific articles, there are actually a few, quite a few methods to reading the paper. And I think if you read papers to gather new ideas, you actually don't have to read the papers in depth. I think if you're doing it to learn a new technique or if you really want to follow the ideas in the paper and apply them yourselves, it's sometimes a bit better to do a deep read. But to do a more shallow type of reading, it is definitely a different technique. So the first thing that you do is usually I skim the abstract to see if the paper is even relevant because a lot of times the title maybe says something but even the reading the abstract we can kind of see that oh this is not what I'm looking for then the next thing I do is I read the conclusion because the conclusion just says the what kind of findings the papers found and if this is relevant for you and after the conclusion I go to the figures immediately and I try to understand the figures without reading the text I think if you understand a topic quite well you should be able to understand the figures without having read the text and if you don't this can mean two things or you don't have enough knowledge on this topic and you have to read the accompanying results or it could be that the figures were badly made which is also something that happens quite a lot and after I've looked at the results I usually skim read the method section and that's because the method section for me is usually the most and the least interesting it's the most interesting if I decide that the paper is super relevant for my PhD and if I want to emulate something for example that they've done but it's the least interesting in the sense that sometimes it just has a lot of details a lot of jargon that you don't necessarily need to have in your brain so I think that's really the point where you can win or lose time. So let's get into reading 10 more papers. So I also wanted to give you a list of tools. So throughout the week, of course, I've used a lot of tools that I personally use for reading scientific articles. And in this video, I want to introduce you to four So also I want to give you a list of tools that I always use when reading papers and I think they can be really helpful if you're also on a reading challenge or just in general for your PhD. So the first thing that you really need is a reference manager. So reference managers 
are very diverse. You can use Sotero, Mendeley or EndNote and they help you organize and manage your references and they allow you to save, organize your papers, generate biographies and annotate your readings. And I started with Mendeley and then changed to Zotero. Not really with a specific reason, but I just liked a little bit more how Zotero looked. And something that I really like that you can do with Zotero is create these kind of tags. So for example, I created this tag that is just called red and it also has this green color such that I can kind of track over time which papers I have read and which papers I still need to read. Another thing that I personally really like to use lately is to use summarizing tools and of course there's no better summarizing tool than ChatGPT. I think using ChatGPT in an academic setting is definitely something you have to do with caution but to summarize a paper or summarize an introduction or to re-explain a certain part of the text I think ChatGPT can be really good for that. So you give it a little part of the text and you ask it for a five note summary for example that you can paste in your notion or another type of tool that you use to track your notes. And that way you can create these kind of summary overviews of all the papers that you have read. And then if ever you need to reference something or you just want to know a little bit what that paper was about, you can just look at your summary notes. Two other things that I kind of want to talk about, and that's more to find papers, is to use Scopus. So Scopus is a really nice tool to find papers, but I think it's also really nice that you can create these alerts for certain authors that you like. So for example, a few people that I know in the field that publish a lot, I have created alerts for them. And then every week or every month on my email, I get a dedicated email to the papers that they have published that month. And that's a really good way to passively stay updated with the latest research. Another way that I've talked about many times in previous videos of how to stay updated with the research is to use Twitter. And Twitter is just, I think for researchers, one of the best social media platforms. Even though some controversial things have been happening on Twitter, I still think it's the only platform that I personally know that really allows you to follow some of your favorite researchers in the field. And almost all researchers that I know, if they have any type of preprint, they will post it on Twitter. And also something that I find really nice is that a lot of professors are very much against the paid services that you have to provide for papers. They don't really agree with some of the paywalls that certain journals have. And such they will provide usually links to their papers for free on websites such as BioArchive, such that students that don't have the money to read expensive journals can also access their papers. So at the end of the week, I have read these many papers and I'm actually really proud of how far I've come. I think in general in doing your PhD, it's really hard to balance the amount of output you have to produce and the amount of input you have to consume. And for me, what really works is to sometimes divide my weeks into weeks that I do a little bit more reading and weeks that I do a little bit more programming or some type of teaching. And I think in my mind, I just, if I notice that I really don't have some kind of knowledge on a subject or I really have to push a little bit more towards another subject or really have to learn about something, I do usually try to take some time off to really spend on acquiring that knowledge and really updating my level of knowledge on the field. And I think this can be really overwhelming and I do know people that structure it differently. For example, some of my friends read one paper every morning and that way they have read about five papers every week because of course you take Saturday and Sunday off. But yeah, let me know if you have any tips or tricks of how you divide your work between reading, writing, studying, all of these things that you have to do as a student. And also let me know if you have any curiosities that you have about neuroscience, because I definitely in the future want to make a few more videos about neuroscience as well. And otherwise, see you next week. Bye.